Hello YouTube, Joe Holbrook here, the Cloud Tech Guy. Want to do a quick shout out on the Google Cloud Architect exam. It has been updated as of November 9th. Now for those folks that have been studying for the last month for it, uh, it is important to note that you pay attention to some of the objectives. They have changed. Also too, they removed one of the case study and also updated the remaining three case studies that were originally in there. Uh, with that said, you can see on the screen here when you take the um, uh, the links that are on the architect page. Uh, if you go back here, I'll just show you just in case. If you go to the main page for the cloud architect, you will see that they have uh, two links under review the exam guide. Well, the exam guide has been updated and therefore you'll want to look at the exam guide and also the case studies. These have changed, I wouldn't say significantly, but enough to make you want to go back and make sure you get everything they're going to test you on. Because again, there's probably about eight new line items. Uh, I didn't count it, it was probably seven or eight total, but uh, they have changed and therefore you'll be tested on a little bit more material. It is developer heavy, this exam. Don't get fooled by the architect name of the exam it's really focused on development uh, to a certain degree as well and therefore people get surprised by having to decipher python scripts and talk about ci pipelines and jenkins and pumping out um you know that cd and ci pipeline uh with the google cloud services so this is what i want people to pay attention to uh, if you don't take any of the courses where I go into this in detail, at least you'll have an idea uh, from the YouTube video mini course I'm putting out uh, on how you want to approach this. Okay, so let's go back to the screen here and uh, just go back to the case studies. Uh, so before the case studies, actually, um, let's look at the objectives uh, and the case studies at the very end. So we'll just take it uh, step by step. Now you'll see 1.1 here, and if you compare left to right, it's very simple. Look at what they've added. So they've added some compliance to section one. Uh, then they also went through and decided that they thought uh, adding some more information around uh, return on investment uh, looked like as well to a degree. It looked like that's pretty much the same success measurements. Uh, but again, if you go through, you'll see that they did add compliance and uh, observability. Now, if you go down to 1.2, again, that's pretty much the same. And then 1.3. Well, when we compare 1.3 uh, to the left and right, you'll notice that uh, it looks like there is um, some changes there as well, right? So it looked like they added um, basically data characteristics to the storage systems. Now that uh, there, and also identification of data processing pipeline, just like I had mentioned, you're going to need to go to, into this exam. This is not the only mention of it. You'll see in the objectives is more. Uh, they're gonna go into mainly how to deploy a CI CD pipeline. That's continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines with Google Cloud services. So for example, where does cloud repositories fit in where does Google Cloud build fit in, for example, Kubernetes engine, so on and so on. And then uh, basically being able to match data characteristics to storage systems. Uh, that one there is a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit, uh, you know, discreet in what they're going to test you on when they stay storage systems. Me as a former storage architect who work with the, the best of the best, like EMC and Itachi and 3PAR. I sort of think, you know, storage systems per se, but what I think they're trying to get out here is cloud services um, around Google Cloud. However, that is brand new, so there isn't much on that, and I've not taken the new exam yet because it just came out, but I will test out on it and see uh, what the big changes are. So again, this is what I want you to look at. Uh, 1.4, you will see is pretty much the same. 1.5 is the same. And then when we get to section two, you'll see that that's the same 
and then 2.2. But then there's some more changes coming here. Just give it a second. You'll see that in 2.3 that they removed one of the objectives. And that was basically um, 2.3 had four objectives here. And then you'll see um, that uh, they up they basically um, basically updated the objectives slightly. Um, and again, when you compare one to one, it looked like, um, you, you know, looking at this, they added, of course, more detail like Ansible, Terraform, so on and so on. So you'll have to just pay attention. So you do need to know, for example, what Ansible is and Terraform and how that plays out uh, into, for example, um, your DevOps processes, development processes. Again, I stated earlier, this is a heavier development exam, in my opinion. And then you'll see that uh, when we get to section three, you'll notice 3.1 goes from five uh, line items here to basically seven line items. You'll notice that, for example, they added managing encryption with Cloud KMS. Now, Cloud KMS is key management in Google Cloud, a managed service. And so, therefore, they expect you to know that. And then if you go over here, you'll see that they add resource hierarchy. This is where they want you to be able to take, um, for example, an organization with G Suite and be able to incorporate that into your folders, projects, your IAM structure is really, you know, where it comes down to is what they're trying to get at. And then when we get to 3.2, nothing significant there. And then section four, same thing there, nothing there. But you, uh, when you do get to 4.2, they do add some uh, line items. There is two new line items. And when you compare, um, for example, uh, left to left here, you'll see that they add team assessment and skills readiness. Now, remember what section you're in. This is basically optimizing technical and business processes. This is basically how do we deploy our applications in a production and development environment, aka DevOps. But also, too, how does, for example, CapEx and OpEx come into play as well? That's added there, too. And then section um, 4.3 is the same. Um, make sure you know what Chaos Monkey is. If you haven't used it, it's definitely a good tool. Uh, let's see, 5.1, once again, nothing there. Now, you'll see 5.2 that uh, they updated this one here. Instead of like reading and writing app development languages, they basically change it to interacting with the SDK. Now, they're also warning you that you want to know G Cloud, but also GSUtil, that's the storage utility, and BQ, that is the BigQuery tool. Now, they want you to know how to install it locally, but also how to use the Cloud Shell. Once again, practice with that if you don't know. And then when we get to Section 6, you'll see that that's pretty much the same. Now, and lastly, the case studies goes from three, uh, from 4 over to 3 in the new version. And they took out uh, essentially Genko Mart here. If you look at Mount Kirk Games over left to, to right approach. You could see that they updated the format of this um, and you could see that it reads differently. So therefore, even though they reduced the number of case study questions, they did update some of the information to the case study. And I would advise you to go ahead and take a look at it. That's about all that I had, folks. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on to the next video.